So there was a recent update to Sora that OpenAI gave us on their blog and they've titled it Sora First Impressions. So they've basically given us an update with where the platform Sora is going to be taken. And I think it is rather fascinating because they released tons and tons of different videos showcasing the kind of use cases for the actual Sora platform. And there was also some news regarding Sora about Sam Altman and where he plans to take the company and also some additional videos that they released showing us just how crazy this is. So let's get into all the facts so you guys can stay updated with exactly when Sora is going to be releasing and when it's going to be coming out. So of course, you can see that they've said here, while we have many improvements to make to Sora, we are already getting a glimpse of how the model can help creatives bring ideas to reality. Then, then they said Sora is at its most powerful when you're not replicating the old, but bringing the life new and impossible ideas we would have otherwise never had the opportunity to see. And this is someone who is a director, someone who's a creative director, someone who works in the creative industry, and this is their opinion. So essentially what's happened here is OpenAI have given priority access to creatives and artistic individuals to use Sora to push the boundaries on what is possible, to see how it can be integrated into their workflows, and to see essentially how they can really use this software in their daily lives. Because what OpenAI want to do is they really want to essentially have have this as a part of the standard for movie industries. Maybe you use Sora for pre-visualization techniques when you're making a film, you have, you know, lower quality videos before you actually shoot the high quality film, or maybe you just do use it as, you know, a last minute backdrop kind of thing for some background footage. So um, they also said, while we have many improvements to make to Sora, we're already getting a glimpse of how the model can help creators bring a new idea to reality. And I think this is rather important because what we're gonna see with Sora is that remember, this is Sora V1, so just like the Dali progression, you know, moving forward, I think by Dali, you know, I mean by Sora, by version three or by version four, I think we're going to see a lot of major improvements. And once all those improvements get ironed out, I do think it's going to be absolutely incredible, the kind of software that we're going to have. So I think another thing that you do have to remember is that, you know, they're going to be making improvements to this. This is, of course, their first video model that they've done. Um, and I wonder what happens if they even scale it up further, because this was a system that did scale with compute. There was another quote that they did put here that saying as great as Sora is at generating things that appear real what excites us is its ability to make things that are totally surreal and i'm going to show you guys some of my favorite demos from this because some of them were really really cool so here's a piece of information before i show you guys some of the really really cool uh video demos um essentially this if you didn't watch yesterday's video the video before essentially OpenAI is actually like i just said trying to get this into hollywood and you can see OpenAI caught hollywood in meetings with the film studios directors the startup is pitching its new ai video generation tool sora ceo sam altman attended LA parties during the Oscars weekend and essentially it says right here the AI startup has scheduled meetings in LA next week with Hollywood studios, media executives, and talent agencies to form partnerships in the entertainment industry and encourage filmmakers to integrate its new AI video generator into their work according to people familiar with their matter. So essentially, this is something that OpenAI is trying to break into. And I think an important trend to look at here is the fact that OpenAI are going to be doing this a lot in the future. Like I think as OpenAI builds more and more proprietary models, I think it wouldn't be surprising if we do get this company, you know, just literally breaking new ground in just a ton of different areas and then just making the company even more valuable because a tool like Sora, there isn't really competition on the marketplace right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the future when they have Sora V3, V4, V5, it just becomes like an industry standard tool that everyone uses um, and OpenAI is somehow now in the media industry too. Now, here was one of the first ones and I won't be able to play the background music for this because when I tried to um, and I uploaded the video, it said blocked worldwide. So due to the music, I can't show you guys, you know, the actual audio but you guys can see this so the description is here in the bottom left i've added this description you know from taking it from the web page essentially it says based in toronto sky kids are a multimedia production company who utilize sora for their short film about a balloon man we now have the ability to expand on stories we once thought impossible and this shares the trio made up of walter woodman sydney leader and patrick cedarberg and essentially he says as great as sora is you know we've already read that quote but the point here is that this is a short film and essentially it talks about a man who is you know his head is pretty much a balloon and it's kind of like a funny sort of surreal I wouldn't say comedy but like you know just an in interesting insight into someone's um, life from a unique perspective on things that are much much easier to do um, because of course you know if you wanted to do this beforehand you would have to use like CGI, rotoscoping, green screen, all these kind of you know media industry standard techniques but um, this one was really cool because it just had a nice sort of voiceover, it was really cinematic and it was just talking about you know the difficulties of living with a uh, balloon as your head. So 
this is something that you know shows the creative expression that you can have with Sora as a filmmaking tool. Um, and I, th I think it's really, really effective. Now, there was a another one here. And this, by far, is one of my favorite ones, i got to say, because, um, you know, there, there was a bit of humor in there because uh, he did actually talk about, you know, when he was going to buy something and then, you know, he had to walk into a cactus store. I think he actually talks about that. Uh, yeah, here, going into a cactus store to buy something when your head is filled with balloons is pretty hilarious. But um, there's some more demos that are really, really impressive. We've got another one right here, Paul Trillo, a multidisciplinary artist, writer, and director whose work has earned accolades from outlets like the Royal Rolling Stone and The New Yorker. He said, working with Sora is the first time I felt unchained as a filmmaker. Not restricted by time, money, or other people's permission, I can ideate and experiment in bold and exciting ways. His experimental video reflects on this approach, and Sora is, of course, the most powerful when you're doing yada, yada, yada. And essentially, right here, you know, I didn't want to read that again because we've already read it before. But the point is, is that I think what we're starting to see here is that Sora allows for a level of creative expression that previously you couldn't really do because CGI is quite expensive. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're watching movies and you're like, why is the CGI so terrible? It's just because CGI is very, very expensive. It takes a long time to render out certain scenes. And, you know, the teams have to get paid quite a lot. You know, they're working a lot of hours and it just takes a lot of time and a lot of money to, you know, put it all on those servers and computers to render it out. It's, it's, it's a very extensive process. So if you can have something like this where you don't need to, you know, have a CGI team, you know, 3D model it, do the lighting, do the rendering, do the, you know, entire creative process, you can just use text to video and then you can get a lot more creative with the kinds of thing that you want to create. And that's why something like this is so powerful for the creative industry because it, means that now instead of you know just waiting a long long time in order to ideate things you can really quickly and easily start to visualize certain projects that wouldn't otherwise be available and i find that this tool is going to be really really impactful because as long as it does get released to the wider community you know some people are speculating that sora might not considering the fact that sora is currently in its current state very very compute intensive that maybe they're just going to strike a few deals with hollywood in terms of like big licensing deals for people to just use this um and then the going to be using this on the back end for maybe some other big companies as well maybe some animation studios i mean either way this is definitely some remarkable level of technology but just trust me when i say um, as someone who's had a, a decent bit of experience when looking at the cgi industry and stuff like that i just know how long things take um and using this as like maybe a previous engine or something that even can be used in certain final renditions, I think that this is of course gonna be something that's really powerful. Now, we also had this one right here, and this one was also really cool. Native is a foreign Emmy nominated creative agency from LA, California, specializing in brand storytelling, motion and title design and generative AI workflows. The co-founder says he uses it to visualize concepts and rapidly iterate on creative creatives for brand partners, suggesting that budgetary constraints no longer have to remain entirely shaped for the narrative of the creative and i'm one of those creatives that thinks in motion so when i'm in sora it feels like i can bring any ideas to life so yeah it, it, it's like i said before it's something that you can really really see when you actually have this in the tools of people who are actually filmmakers and who are actually you know part of the industry standard they know the techniques to use combine that with their level of intelligence in their given field and you do get something that is rather rather impressive and you don't have to remember that what you're watching right now is 100 percent completely ai generated like it's not you know combined with any you know raw footage everything in these videos from what i've seen is 100 ai generated so that's why i feel like this is going to really really produce some interesting things and i can see this uh definitely being seen in some other things and later on in the video i do want to talk about something that's pretty insane because that was a statement that i saw that was rather rather a bit crazy there was also another example here by an artist slash musician and i wouldn't be surprised if sora does get used for music videos because i think music videos if you are a musical artist the music production process is very, very expensive, especially if you're someone who's trying to bootstrap your own career. Um, it's very, very expensive, which is why people do have labels behind them that, you know, give them funding for music videos and to work on projects and stuff like that. So being able to, you know, ideate with your music videos, get backdrops, get visuals, certain things like that with a text prompt, I think that definitely might, you know, level the playing field in some industries, allowing people to just, you know, focus on the music and, you know, less on, you know, budgets, budgetary constraints and all those kind of things, because it definitely is hard to do that as well. And then there was also this one, and I'm going to show you guys my favorite one. In fact, let me, show, let me skip to my favorite one, because this one 
is by far the most impressive one out of all of them in terms of what I visually like. So essentially, Don Allen made this one and I think this one was really, really cool. Um, and he says, for a long time, I've been making augmented hybrid reality creatures that I think would be really cool. And now I have an easier way to do that. So essentially, it's like a documentary about animals that are combined with different species of animals that we would never get to see in the wild. And you can see right here, we ascend with the flying pigs, charming creatures that redefine their skies with harmonious flight. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just very, very fascinating. We can see some kind of, you know, the whale puss, you know, some kind of creature that's like an octopus, but also like a whale. We're getting this kind of, you know, interesting documentary on that. The eel cat, you know, an underwater cat that's like shaped like an eel. It's very, very fascinating to actually watch this kind of thing because we'd never really get this content unless someone did you know, that like CGI stuff. And remember guys, um, only the big, big companies have, you know, money um, to be able to put like millions of dollars into those CGI. And when you see those like lower budget films and you're like, oh my God, like the CGI is so poor here. Just understand that it is not cheap to get good CGI. Um, and that's something that, uh, like I said, I think it's going to change things because now people are able to do a lot of different things without the budgetary constraints. So something like this as well, you can see the, uh, you know, fox, you know, fox crow uh, right there. It's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. So I definitely would be watching this kind of content because I think it's, you know, creative. I think it's like interdimensional cable from like Rick and Morty. It's something that rather fascinates me just on a, you know, just on a human level because, uh, you know, we never know what hybrids we're going to get in the future. But um, yeah, all of these examples are really, really fascinating. And then we had one last example here and I'm going to show you guys some more stuff from OpenAI. Um, and then you can see Alexander Rubin is an artist who has spent the last decade creating work that explores the humor and absurdity of human nature in AI. And he's been creating sculptures. And he says, uh, my experience of using Sora was to start as a starting point to develop a 3D sculpture. Um, and then, of course, transforming video into 3D models intrigued me as it hinted at propelling the AI system beyond its initial scope. So here he's basically just using this to ideate his kind of sculptures to see how things work. And like I said, it's going to be used in a very, very creative ways. Now, um, another thing that OpenAI have actually been doing is they've actually been releasing several TikTok videos that you can see right here. Um, and these were videos that were released very, very recently that goes to showcase some of its crazy, crazy capabilities. Like, for example, this one, which is the interior of a house. And I think this one is very, very crazy and insane and just so realistic because, you know, being able to, you know, scroll all the way out, around and just maintain the consistency in terms of what we're seeing in the video is something that is, you know, pretty much unheard of from these kind of video systems. So being able to generate like a minute of footage is something that's rather fascinating. And they released this clip literally, I think yesterday or the day before. Um, and this is something that is also, once again, quite fascinating. We have a elephant that is made out of leaves and we can see that the physics of this do look pretty, pretty good. Now, like I said before, this is technology that is going to only get better. So can you imagine once we get, you know, 1080p, a really, really HD stuff that just looks absolutely incredible. I mean, there's probably techniques to even up upscale this stuff. I know that there's probably going to be a company that, you know, um, works on upscaling videos. We've already seen some stuff with, I think it's Korea AI um, or Leonardo AI, but there's tons of companies that are out there that do that. And, you know, the realism of this as well is crazy because most people would look at this clip and, you know, when people were browsing on TikTok, they saw this and they thought it was, you know, real until they saw that it was produced by OpenAI. And this is a cat wearing a pirate hat on a Roomba. And it's just, it's just uncanny in terms of how realistic it is. Now, one tweet I did see that just made absolutely no sense was this tweet right here. Uh, and it says, so most of these are really weird and done specifically to try and hide how bad the detail is, but I'm loving this bicycle repatch shop, which has a double car next to it. This is the best they can do. And I don't get that statement because stating that this is the best they can do, haha, look at the mistakes this AI system made, doesn't make sense considering the fact that, you know, like this commented below said, you know, your copium levels are out of control. And by copium levels, he just means that you're coping with the fact that this technology is actually advancing rapidly. And he says, if you saw these clips 15 months ago, you would not believe it was possible that AI could create them in the next 10 years. And if you remember in the initial Sora release video, I talked about how someone stating that we were going to get, you know, AI text to video in a really HD level, you know, people were stating that that guy was an absolute moron and he was downvoted like a lot. He was downvoted like 15 times. And if you don't know what that means, that just means where people really disagree with your opinion. Um, and everyone was saying, yeah, maybe in our great grandkids lifetime, we'll get that. 
and it's here, like literally three years or two years after that comment on Reddit. So um, I think it's going to be interesting to come back to this because people saying that, you know, haha, look, the issues here, here, here. I mean, all of this stuff could be solved in the next update. It was just like mid journey with the hands. Oh my God, look at the hands. These AI systems make no sense. And now we've got perfect hands. And I mean, I mean mid journey V6 is pretty much, you know, perfect across the board. So like I said, I, th I think, uh, you know, laughing at the AI's first system doesn't really make sense it will be interesting to see how things get on in the future either way it seems that OpenAI are leaning into the hollywood route and leaning into helping creatives uh do that stuff but you know it's going to be interesting to see how this all develops if sora actually does get released if it's just an exclusive hollywood deal let me know what you guys think about sora are you waiting for it are you excited for it but if you enjoy the video i'll be seeing you guys in the next one